Video editing is one of the most important skills to have these days. Take it from me who has edited like over 400 videos for myself and for others. If you have basic knowledge of how to tell a story with a camera and editing software, your skill level will rise that much more. So when a company called Mini Tool Software reached out and asked me to check out their movie maker software, um, at first I wasn't sure if I would go for it, but they said it's free. So I decided to take a look. So this is their website. We can download for free. So let's take a look. Okay, pretty straightforward installation. Now I'm planning to make a short 30 second intro or something like that, completely editing using this movie maker. Let's see what the editing experience would be like. I mean, I use Premiere on a daily basis, so I'll give you my impressions of what the editing experience is like. I started with free software just like everyone else, and that's what I recommend to you as well. Let's see if this is the free software you should be looking at. All right, pretty simple interface right off the bat. They give you a brief intro as soon as you launch it. Okay, if I click on import media, yep, it opens file explorer, pretty straightforward. You can import your video video files there. I have recorded a short like sequence on my phone. Let me just transfer it over and that's it. That's how you drag it into the timeline and it feels rather smooth. My PC is on performance mode by the way. It has a Ryzen 7 and RTX 3060 so it should be plenty of power for this. I mean even Premiere Pro runs absolutely fine. So I noticed a few minor stutters here and there. Yeah, let's see. They even have a shortcut here for YouTube downloader. So that's a separate tool that you can download but it seems like it's a different app. I wish it was integrated into a single app so I can, you know, download YouTube videos directly into my timeline. I understand that this is free, but that would have been cooler. So I can use their YouTube downloader software, go to a video and just download it from there. That's really handy. I don't have a YouTube downloader on my PC. Whenever I want to like record a snapshot of my own video, I just screen record it. This might be even better than that. Okay, I'm noticing that the timeline doesn't scroll with the mouse. I mean, when you scroll the mouse wheel, the timeline doesn't scroll horizontally. Uh, let me try with the no I, I tried with the trackpad the timeline doesn't horizontally scroll i mean yeah we can use the scroll bar down here but uh, it's not like a pro grade thing as i said it's meant for entry level you know beginner editors so for them it may not matter as much so you can either cut using this icon up here i wish there was a keyboard shortcut but that's fine you can even click on it and it even gives you a small floating icon to cut it on top of the you know the playhead here if you click on that icon it cuts there and it's really easy to separate the two cuts you can see there's plenty of space, so it's easy to move the mouse around there. So yeah, pretty beginner friendly through and through. I like it. I am noticing that every time I cut, it does take a while to repopulate the, the remaining, you know, the previews of the remaining clips. Um, it may have something to do with the RAM. I mean, I have plenty of free RAM. I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe it requires a little bit of optimization. Because as I said, much heavier software like Premiere run fine on my machine. So maybe the software could use a little bit more fine tuning. I mean, I'll admit, once you get used to this trimming shortcut, it's pretty fast. I mean, you can just use your mouse to trim all of the clips. It becomes a one-handed operation, which is pretty cool. You don't have to change the playhead between trim and move like you have to do in other software. I'm noticing that the Ctrl Z operation only goes back for like three to four steps. So if you have done a lot of changes, like six, seven steps, don't expect Ctrl Z to bring back all of them. But it does have Ctrl Y as well. So you can redo and undo for about four to five steps. So that's good. Some software doesn't have redo. Strange, isn't it? It seems like a basic thing to have. Well, it's here. Okay, let's add some sound design, you know, let's bring in some audio. Oh, um, I can't seem to import a video in the audio format. Like I can't seem to separate audio and video. So mini tool, that's a suggestion I have. Bring in an option where I can just add the audio from a video clip. And also I noticed that there is no drag and drop function to import clips. I have to click on this import media file option and then select the media. It's fine, obviously, but you know, a small thing that I noticed. Again, once you get used to it, trimming is pretty fast. It's a really easy user friendly thing. Of course, it doesn't have a lot of features, but it has the basics. Like for example, it has those sliders up top that allows you to change the uh, saturation, contrast and brightness, or in other words, exposure of the shot. Those were the three sliders that I used to use a lot of times. In fact, that's what I do in my videos. Like I drop the exposure a little bit that brings up the shadows and then I pump up the saturation. That's what gives my videos that HDR-ish look. You can take that tip for yourself. It has a bunch of other cool things like, you know, transitions, text, basic elements. So you can do a really good entry level video with this for free. 
Best part is it doesn't have any watermarks as far as I know. We'll export the video in a second and take a look. I'm not big on transitions. I'm a pretty simple guy. I keep it at normal cut. So I don't add any transitions in my videos as you may have seen. So I'm going to keep it at a very basic shot by shot cut. And uh, yeah, let's export this. Again, export interface is pretty simple. Uh, you can't really change a lot of things like the frame rate. That's one of the things I would have liked to see, I guess. Like if I bring in a 60 FPS video, I wish there was an option to export it in 30 FPS or 24 FPS. Again, it's not something that a beginner would be worrying about, but still something that I noticed. So it just exports in the native frame rate and the native aspect ratio as your original video. So in this case, it is around uh, 21 by 9 in, uh, I think, 60 FPS. All right, let's export it. Yep, pretty fast, pretty easy export. Again, it depends on the power of your machine, but it should be fairly easy depending on your, you know, your content. Okay, it's done exporting. Let's take a look at what we made. Not bad, right? I mean, using some simple sound design and basic cuts, you can put together something really creative for free. Man, I wish I had this in my early days of YouTube. Like, I was just editing everything on my phone in this tiny screen. This would have been a little bit better. The fact that you can do all of this editing pretty easily without any watermarks is pretty well worth it. So yeah, mini tool, if you could just, you know, focus on a few points that I mentioned, uh, everything else, I like it. I have no problems recommending this to someone who's just starting to edit videos. You can download this for free from the link in the description. If you use my link in the description, you, you get the same free software, but they'll know that I have sent you. That's how they decide whether to sponsor me next time or not. So you'll be helping me in the process. So if you found this video useful or valuable in some way, then yeah, you can check that link and get a free software. And thanks to mini tool for sponsoring this video. This was a, uh, this was interesting. This was fun.